This video was sponsored by Brilliant. How long will it be until Starship launches from Florida? Perhaps we can come up with an estimate based on the progress we've seen at the Cape, plus what we witnessed in Boca Chica. In this Cape flyover, the Florida Starship factory has progressed lightning fast, no four towers needed, and the Starship launch tower at 39A is almost complete. Meanwhile, SLS is still on the pad, but maybe not for long. All that and more starting right now. Beginning, as always, with SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, we can see major progress on the Starship Factory, or Star Factory, building. When you take into account how it looked on our last flyover, the rapid pace is clear. The first portion of the building already has a roof in place, and an exterior wall has gone up as well. At the same time, more framing has gone up for the second part of the factory. Also, they're continuing to stage prefabricated roof sections in an assembly line-like fashion. This is looking more and more similar to the equivalent building over at Boca Chica. To the east of the factory building, we can see progress on the Cape's future mega bay. One of the smaller cranes at the site is now situated at the center of the impending structure, and SpaceX's own LR11000 crane is standing by outside waiting for major construction to begin. Meanwhile, more and more parts are being staged nearby. Based on how long it took them to build the mega bay at Starbase, we can expect this structure to be done in around 8 or 9 months. Starbase Mega Bay was begun around the end of August 2021, for reference. So a year from now, the Cape Mega Bay could very well be operational. Near the entrance to the Mega Bay, a set of smaller foundations have been laid. This is similar to how the High Bay and Mega Bay were built at Starbase, with a set of smaller foundations to one side of each building, where each level was prefabricated, ahead of being lifted and installed on the structure. Over to the northern fabrication area, progress continues on the chopsticks, their carriage, and the ship quick disconnect arm. The chopstick arms themselves can be seen with the rails already installed. These will be needed in order to stack and catch boosters at the pad once SpaceX is ready to do so. A crane can be seen holding the shoulder section of the QD arm. This is the part of the arm that will be closest to the Starship launch tower. On the carriage system, a hydraulic accumulator has been installed, which will aid in the opening and closing of the chopsticks during their operation. Before a Starship can launch from Florida, all of these pieces must be finished and transported to 39A, then assembled on the tower, of course. Based on the same activities in Boca Chica, we can expect this to take roughly four or five months. Over at the tower construction area, you can see the final tower segment with the chopstick pulley system already installed, with a set of self-propelled modular transporters underneath. This indicates that at the time of the flyover, rollout for this segment was imminent. Sure enough, just after our flight, the final tower segment rolled to 39A. It may have even been stacked on the tower by the time you watch this. Once this has happened, the Starship launch tower at Pad 39A will be at its final height. Speaking of the 39A launch tower, let's jump on over to Launch Complex 39A because the Starship launch tower is, in fact, three levels higher than our last flyover. Although in this shot, it's only two levels higher because Segment 8 was lifted after we flew. At this point, it dwarfs the fixed service structure for Falcon 9. Progress continues, as always, on the ground systems needed to support Starship testing and launches at 39A. The big cryogenic tank at 39A is now at least twice as tall as it was on our last flyover, and construction of another tank has begun to the north. This newer tank appears to use more of a traditional construction method. Given its placement, it wouldn't surprise me if this was additional methane capacity, but we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on to the south of this tank, the newly refurbished hydrogen-turned-methane sphere is all white and shiny now compared to our last flyover, a good sign that its refurbishment is done. Additionally, a new set of transfer lines can be seen, going from the methane tank farm all the way to the south where the launch tower is located. A better vantage point to see all this was recently facilitated by our good buddy Harry Stranger, who recently updated us with imagery from satellite views of 39A, and we can see all of this progress from an orbital perspective. We can spot the new subcoolers that have been added near the large cryo tank, adding some weight to the hypothesis that it will be part of the LOX tank farm for Starship. On top of this, it should be noted that the LOX sphere that SpaceX currently uses at 39A for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches has not seen any work at all in the past month. There also seems to be another addition to the tank farm that is similar to what has been built in Boca Chica, a cryogenics bunker. This will house all the vital components needed to control and distribute the propellants and other necessary commodities into the tower and orbital launch mount to feed both ship and booster during tests and launches. Both in these satellite views and in our own imagery from the flyover, we can see that the strange hexagonal structure at the old Starship landing zone has had pipes and other structures added to it, deepening the mystery as to what it will be used for. Based on all of this, I'm guessing, and I want to be clear that this is a total guess, that we're around a year away from seeing a Florida Starship launch at least. And that timeline might need to involve a vehicle that wasn't built at the Cape. 
No, I don't think they'll fly ships or boosters to the Cape from Boca Chica, as cool as that would be. Instead, I'm referencing repeated rumblings we've heard of ships and boosters being transported to the Cape from Boca Chica via barge. What do you think? Is that too long, too short, or just right? Let us know what you think in the comments. That's not all for 39A though, as on the main ramp, the Falcon 9 TE, or Transporter Erector, is missing, indicating that it has been rolled back to the Horizontal Integration Facility for rocket integration and launch. What are they launching this time? You guessed it, it's another Starlink launch! Update, Booster 1058 flew a record 14th flight, deploying its Starlink and other payloads, and then succeeding in sticking a 14th landing. Amazing! I can't believe I was at the Cape for two weeks and saw two Starlink missions but not SLS launching. What's that? Who said that? Not me! Orange Rocket good! Speaking of Orange Rocket, at Launch Complex 39B, SLS remains on the pad after its two scrubbed launch attempts. The plan is currently to try and fix the liquid hydrogen seals that leaked on the second launch attempt at the pad, rather than roll the entire vehicle back, since that lets them test the fixes with cryogenic liquids and temperature. NASA has set a launch date no earlier than September 23rd, pending a successful wet dress rehearsal on the 17th and the range extending the certification time on the flight termination system batteries. However, if they don't get that extension, or if further issues pop up, then a rollback will be needed and the launch date will slip further. Speaking of SLS, we do have SLS merch. The Exploded View t-shirt comes in two flavors, one for fun and one for fans. The fun one will help you chuckle, and the fan one will help you remember every part of SLS before the next launch attempt. Over at Slick 37B, no rocket is visible. What is cool to know, though, is the fact that the hydrogen stored at this pad can also be used to assist SLS. If they need to fast replenish the hydrogen storage at pad 39B, they can use the facilities at 37B for that. Neat! Next up, let's move over to Blue Origin's Exploration Park campus. Work on the warehouse expansion continues. No, for real, construction on the frame of the warehouse expansion has begun, and at the same time, a large number of parts are being staged nearby. Next to the warehouse, a larger area has been cleared, and new plans show this to be for a composite assembly building and a reef pathfinder building, also a vertical assembly area. It's likely this area will continue to grow with even more production buildings over time to support Blue's future plans. Let's hope we see serious foundation work in the area by our next flyover. Over at the 2CAT, the building receives some blue siding, making it look more like the rest of the facility. The work on the roof is finished and a path is being prepared in front of it. Work also appears to be continuing on the inside of the 2CAT, which will host future New Glen second stages for cleaning and testing, hence the name 2CAT. Meanwhile, over at Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36, we can see that the second stage test tank is no longer on the stand at the north end of the complex. This could be a sign that the testing of the tank has been completed, or maybe the tank is back inside and being worked on before another round of testing. On the eastern side of the pad, behind the water tower from this perspective, there are new foundations being prepared. Site revision plans from March label this as, quote, GS1 test area. We have seen Blue Origin use GS-1 as a designation for Glen Stage 1 before, so it seems that this area will be for testing New Glen first stages. Next up, over at Relativity's Launch Complex 16, Terran 1 is still sunbathing, I mean testing, outside, ahead of its launch attempt in the near future. No second stage is visible yet, which will of course be needed for the orbital flight test. We'll have to keep our eyes and ears open and see when Relativity will announce a more firm launch target for its rocket. Meanwhile, over at the port, both drone ships were at sea during this flyover, though just read the instructions was a few hours from returning with Falcon 9 Booster 1052. Luckily, it was visible returning on Fleet Cam, our 24-7 live camera in Port Canaveral. It's still crazy to me that SpaceX can just routinely land 20-story rockets on barges out in the middle of the ocean. If you want a better handle on some of the mathematics involved in such an amazing feat of engineering, check out our sponsor for this video, Brilliant.org. I don't know about you, but I prefer to learn from hands-on experience rather than by, say, watching a lecture. With Brilliant, you get interactive lessons in all kinds of STEM topics that help you learn more effectively than just watching or reading something. Brilliant uses examples, diagrams, and simple questions to help guide you through topics, which is way more conducive to actually retaining the information. There are courses on a wide array of topics, from coding to calculus. There's even a rocket equation lesson as part of the classical mechanics course. Or perhaps you want to brush up on the bedrock of it all with the scientific thinking course that comes right before it. That way you can feel more comfortable with advanced topics. Either way, get started learning on Brilliant for free today with a special offer just for our viewers. Visit brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight or click the link in the description. The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium membership. It'll help you learn and it helps us out too.
Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave us a comment if you have something to say and subscribe if you haven't already for our continued coverage of all things Starship, Spaceflight, Rockets, and Space. See you next time.